Quartus is the design software that we'll be using for our FPGA development. It was developed by a company called Altera, who are one of the largest FPGA manufacturers worldwide, along with Xilinx. Each manufacturer has their own design software, and you cannot interchange between the two. If you're working on an Altera device, as we are, you use Quartus. If it's a Xilinx, you use their IDE instead. Altera were recently bought out by Intel, so you'll see a lot of their branding in the software and on the website. Quartus is a huge and complex piece of software. Over the next 11 weeks, we'll only really be scratching the surface of what it can do. Of course, with complexity comes chance for mishap, so if you're going to play around with any settings, uh, just make sure you back up your projects first. As you'll learn about later in the module, a lot of digital design involves the implementation of other people's IP, and this is where a significant cost can come in for the licenses. In this module, we're not using anything with a paid license, so you can get away with using the free version of Quartus. This is available on the Intel website. Just do a search for Quartus Lite Edition, you should find this page. Make sure you select the same version that we have in the labs, which is 17.1, as mismatch versions can cause all kinds of compatibility issues. You'll also need to make sure to download uh, the Max 10 device support, as it's a Max 10 device on our development board. So without further ado, let's get started on our first Quartus project. The first thing we need to do is start up Quartus itself. The simplest way to launch on the lab machines is just to open the start menu and start typing Quartus. It should pop up pretty quickly as it has done here. Again, like I said, make sure that you're running 17.1 if you're working on your own laptop. Click on that and the software should boot. It'll open up into the main Quartus window with some project options available. Later on in this screencast, I'll go over what these other windows are for, but for now we'll just create a new project. We start the process by clicking the New Project Wizard button, which will open up the Project Wizard window. The Project Wizard takes you through the basics of setting up a new project so you don't have to do everything manually. The first thing we need to do is set our project's workspace, and there's a very important thing to note here. Compiling an FPGA design is a huge task and requires a lot of processing power. It generates and works with a lot of small files which need to be created or opened and closed. This means that compiling over a network takes a huge amount of time, so we want to be doing everything locally. If you're working on the lab machines, create a temp folder in C and backhook to your network drive at the end of the class. The same goes for storing projects in the cloud, work on it locally, then backup at the end. Please do remember to back up as the lab machines are regularly wiped and we can't guarantee that your work will still be there next time. So we'll open the C drive, go into temp and create a new folder called Quartus Projects. Note that I'm doing everything in camel case here. This isn't strictly necessary for folder names, but it's the practice I've got into from doing a lot of scripting and work in the terminal, where it's far, far easier to have file names without any spaces in. It's best to keep all your projects in separate folders, as each project generates a large number of files, some of which have generic names. Storing multiple projects in the same folder can get confusing, and you could possibly end up overwriting some key files. So we'll create a new folder for this project's workspace. We'll call this one Example Task. As you go through the module, it's worth giving each workspace a name related to the task that you'll be doing, i.e. 201 AND gate, or something like that. Click Select Folder, and this sets our workspace. We'll call this project Simple Logic and hit Next to carry on with the setup. We'll create an empty project, so just carry on to the next screen. We don't want to add any files into our project this time. Later on in the module, you'll be reusing files from previous weeks, so you can add them in at this stage as opposed to manually adding them later. We now need to pick our board. The board that we're using is a DE10 Lite, and the FPGA on that board is part of the Max 10 family. So we can select it from the drop-down box here, and then select the board from the list. You can see here that it details the exact model number of the FPGA, which is the 10M50DAF484C6GES. 
make sure that you uncheck create top level design file. This option generates a module based on the board you are using, but we're not actually implementing anything yet, so we could do without it. This week we don't need to set any extra EDA tools. In a couple of weeks we'll be doing some simulation work using model sim, so we'll add it to our project then, but for now you can just leave this as none. That finishes the wizard and brings us to a general summary page, so we can check that everything we want is correct and then click finish to generate the project. Once that disappears, it means that everything's been created. We can see our simple logic project in the navigator with no files added to it yet, and our design is for the correct Max 10 device. So just to give you a quick overview of the various parts of the quarters window, as I said before, it's a huge and complex piece of software. We will only just scratch the surface of what you can actually do with it in the short amount of time that we have. It's worth pointing out the key areas that you're going to be using over the next few weeks, and then we'll come back to look at the more complex things as we go along. In the top left pane, we have the Project Navigator. At the moment, it's in the hierarchy mode, which, until we start working with hierarchical design in a couple of weeks, will remain relatively empty. Uh, selecting files from the drop-down box will bring us to the Files window, which is currently empty as we have no files. Once you start creating Verilog files, this window will start to be populated and you can use it to navigate between different modules that you've created. Below the Project Navigator is the Task pane, which outlines the compilation process. By clicking the arrows on each step of the process, you can drill down to a very fine grain of the steps that the compiler is taking, as well as quickly open the associated tools and netlist viewers associated with each step. In this lab session, we'll be looking at tools such as the Chip Planner, the Technology Map Viewer, and the RTL Viewer, which are key tools for analyzing your design prior to programming. At the bottom of the screen is the log window. You'll see once we start compiling that this window fills up with log messages and warning messages. We can ignore most of these for now. Um, it'll also tell you if you have any syntax errors in your design and handily points to the offending line in a broken module. There are a lot of things which appear here which we won't be covering this module as we only have so much time. On the top right, you have the IP catalog. A lot of FPGA design involves the reuse of third-party IP to speed up the design process. The catalog comes pre-populated with some IP generated by Altera, things like arithmetic functions through to DSP algorithms, and even things like soft processors. So you immediately have access to some really complex digital designs, which can be implemented in your system in just a few lines of code. For this lab session, we're not going to be using any of this. We may as well close the window and give ourselves a bit more space. So it's time now to make a start. I'm going to guide you through an example module with just some combinational logic. So the first thing you'll need to do is create a new Verilog file using the button here. We want a new Verilog HDL file. The first thing that you'll notice is that the file is not pre-populated with anything. In the past, you may have been used to the IDE generating things like headers or outline structures for class files. With Quartus, you get nothing, so everything needs to be created from scratch. We'll talk next week about how a model Verilog file should look, but for now we can just quickly write some code. And the best thing to do is to save straight away, so we'll go to File and select Save As. Now, as this file will be the top-level design file of our project, its name should be the same as the project itself. You'll see it's already tried to call it Simple Logic Just V, which is handy. So we'll just leave this as is and hit save. We're now going to create our Simple Logic module. Modules in Verilog are the same as chips in Jack. They define a specific function. You build up different modules to create a full design. Our design this week is going to be relatively simple and will only involve one module. The second key naming standard that you need to remember is that your file name should exactly match your module name. So we're going to call our module Simple Logic. Now we'll go over the specifics of how a Verilog module is constructed next week, but for now just follow along and you should be able to pick up the syntax quite quickly. We'll declare three ports for our module, A, B and OUT, and terminate the interface with a semicolon. 
We can close off the module with an end module statement. I like to do this as soon as I create the module so I don't forget it further down the line. So we've declared our ports in the interface. We now need to define them in the implementation. We want A and B to be inputs and out to be an output. So all we're going to do for now is connect modules A and B to an AND gate and pass the output to our out port. So we write AND brackets out comma A comma B, close brackets. So what this line is saying is that we want an AND gate with an output connected to out and inputs A and B. So we can save that and then compile our design. As I said before, during the compile process, the log window will fill up with information about the compilation, and you can see the stages of compilation being undertaken in the task window. Once a tick has appeared next to a compilation stage, it means that that stage is completed successfully, and you can see right down at the bottom here that full compilation was successful, although there are 15 warnings. The warnings are all to do with undefined parameters for things like missing pin assignments, timing characteristics and clocks. We don't need to worry about this now as we're only doing a quick design which won't be implemented on the device. If your design has any syntax errors, the compilation will stop and they'll be displayed here. I'll just get rid of a semicolon in my design and demonstrate that now. You'll see that compiler crashes pretty quickly. This is because a syntax check is one of the first things that a compiler does. So you can see here that the log shows a syntax error at line 12 of simplelogic.v. The line number is handy as it will allow you to work out exactly where your issue lies, and line numbers are automatically displayed by quarters in the working window. You can see here that it was expecting a semicolon, but was given and instead. So we'll fix that and compile it again. As you will have noticed by now, the full compilation process takes quite a lot of time. This is because it goes through all the stages of the design flow except for programming. It'll check the file for syntax errors, test each module with every possible input to generate a truth table, generate a netlist of uh, discrete elements to replicate the design on hardware, fit this design onto a schematic of specific device that you're using and create the routing information, generate the code to program the design onto hardware and as well as run some timing analysis as well. This is one of the main reasons why we do so much simulation when it comes to FPGA design. If a design takes three hours to compile on a machine, we don't want to be recompiling every time we change a line. Uh, luckily, we can tell Quartus to only complete the compilation sets which we need. So if we're just doing syntax checking or if we want to view the RTL of a circuit that we've described, we can just do the analysis and synthesis stage of the compilation. We can use the second compile button here to start this process. Once that's complete, we can start to use the netlist viewers to look at the circuit we've described.